It's the motivation. It's the reason why. And it's the thing that makes people most interesting to us. Values, human values. You just get a list. Check off. You know, I'm honest and uh, not this one. Oh, that integrity. And all of a sudden, you'll get a better idea of what you really believe in so that you can write that I am statement. And it's really important to do that, as I learned, because if you don't stand for something, if you don't have a clear vision of what you're all about, you will fall for anything. And I learned this one the hard way. One of the biggest mistakes I ever made in business, I made by not knowing what I stood for. So I had just started my agency about 15 years ago. We were two, three years in business, had six, seven people, and we were starving. We didn't know where we were going to get the next account or how we were going to do it. In fact, we didn't know how we were going to survive. And if we didn't do something soon, we were going to go out of business. One day, this woman walked into my office, and she, I thought, was the answer to my prayers. She said, I, uh, I, I have an agency, and we have one account left, and, you know, I, I'm, I'm trying to kind of phase out of the business here, but here's the deal. If you take on this account and give me the support staff I need, I'll let you keep the profits. What? So I did the math, and sure enough, oh, it's going to be very profitable. And I'm thinking like, all right. Announced to the staff the next day, hey, you know, we've got this new opportunity here. And I turn it over to, a loop. I'm not going to tell you her name. I turn it over to, uh, well, let's just call her Mary. And uh, Mary stands up there and she says, okay, here's what we're going to do. Number one, I need people here at 9 o'clock in the morning, precisely at 9. I don't want anybody here at 8.55. I don't, I'm like, I'm in shock. That was her hello. And it went downhill from there. The copy machine was too old. The IT support was archaic. The support staff was non-responsive, and it went on every single day. She even came into my office one day, and she told me the hand soap in the kitchen smelled. Now, that really pissed me off. <laughs> I thought, oh, my God, what am I going to do? I had created civil war in the office because she had polarized people. You know, there's those who I'll do anything she wants. She can, she, she'll promote me if I do. And those are like, God, I'm getting another job. And it really created havoc. What do I do? I have a contract with this woman. I can't get out of it. But one day, she came to my office and said, well, I have some bad news for you. And that is I lost the account. And I'm like, oh, God. Oh, that means you have to, you have to leave? Yeah, I'm afraid I do. Oh, gee. <laughs> and she left. But I learned from that. I didn't stand for anything. The only thing I stood for was survival. I didn't stand for, hey, what's this agency about? What are these people about? What kind of a culture do I want? What do I believe in? What kind of people do I want to attract to this agency on the basis of beliefs and shared values? I didn't think about that. And the truth is, OK, I did survive for a little while. But if I had to go back in time, given what happened to my agency and what almost happened to friends of mine who have stayed with me for the last 15 years, I would have rather gone out of business than work with her. That's how bad it was, and I'm saving you some, some horror stories here. But that's what happens when you don't know what you stand for.